Hey there, this is Chris Sev. And the other day I had a thought about making something in Tailwind. I saw it in person and I thought, you know what? Let's make a flip clock with Tailwind. So the strategy here is that we are going to use CSS Grid and I have a video on CSS Grid if you're interested, but we're gonna use CSS Grid where we have two columns here. And then inside of that grid, we're gonna have uh, a grid on the left, which is two rows, and then a grid on the right, which is two rows as well. And we're gonna do this using Tailwind and no custom style. So this technique for the square here and the square here, so these two black boxes, is that they are going to be absolutely positioned items behind the text right here. And if you've looked at my previous videos, like this one right here, it is a similar strategy where the grid in there is the absolutely positioned and then the text is relatively positioned. So it gets above the background. Same thing here for the Stripe homepage with Tailwind and there's videos on both of those. So here we are gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm going to add Tailwind right here. Tail, can't spell today. Tailwind CSS, hit save and then come down here. So. For these demos, we usually want to start out with a container div. Min height is screen. We're going to say flex, justify center, and items center so we can center everything horizontally and vertically. Then we're going to give this a background background gradient to bottom right. And then let's also go from indigo, and I think 500 to indigo 800 should be a good number. Okay. So that's a really cool gradient there, 500 to 800. I like how that looks. We're going to start out here with um, flip clock container. And then inside of that, we are going to have the left side and then the right side. I gotta get better at these comments. Look at those spaces. Okay, so we'll start out with the flip clock container. We'll say div class is going to be, well, let's do some a clock left goes here, clock right goes here. And let's wrap both of those in a div actually. Div right there, div right there. Close out this div and flip clock container is right here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna give this a border. So we're gonna say a border, we're gonna say border, let's go for eight, border yellow, at 100 and we'll go rounded shadow to XL. Okay, so that looks good right there. And what we can also do is say font mono. So that monospaced font is gonna cascade down to everything inside of this div. And there you go, you see it right there. And we have rounded, cool. So the next thing here is we are going to create a grid right in here and say grid, grid columns two. So that's gonna take both of these child divs and split them side by side. So notice how one's on the left and one's on the right. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to say 0, 05 right here, and we're gonna say 47 right here. And if we are having everything cascade down, we can just say text maybe 4XL right here, and text is white maybe even larger than that since our demo needs a little more room. There we go. I think we can go to nine. Nine should be fine. Okay, so there is the start to our clock. And then what you can do here too is say class is background black and you can kind of see the start of what we're building. So on the left, we have that. On the right, we have that. And what I wanna do here is give a little bit of a gap in between. So for the grid, you have gap classes, which give a spacing in between the different sections and child elements of a grid. For here, we're gonna say gap X is one pixel. And you'll see it get bumped up and there's like a little blue right there. Cool. So now for each of these, we're gonna go for padding is maybe eight. All right. And that's looking like a good start to our flip clock. So if we landed here and stayed here, I think this is even pretty decent the way it is now. But what we're gonna do is we are going to work on the grid background for these sides, and then also that line that goes across the middle. So I'm going to wrap these both in a span. 
And let me break this out. And I want to show you a little bit of what we're going to do here. Okay. So we are going to say, hey, you are relative. And I'm only going to work on one side so we don't have to keep writing and repeating ourselves. So I'm going to say relative. And then we're going to say we are going to need the background grid of black squares. Squares. And then we are going to need the time. Let me zoom out time, numbers, and then also we're going to have line across the middle. So let's start on the background grid of black squares. We're going to say div class is absolute, and we're going to say inset is zero. So that basically says, hey, you div, you are going to be all the way up to the top, left, bottom, and right of your parent div, which is relative, which is this one, so this left side. And to check that it works, let's go for background red at 400. There we go. So you can see that that div right there is taking place. And then also here, we want this span to sit on top of that. So we're gonna say relative. Okay, so that sits above the absolutely positioned item here. And now let's create a grid on this one and say grid, grid, rows is two. And since we've created a grid, we're going to need two divs right there. And we are going to say class is background black. Okay, so that is there. But notice that they're both black. So you can't really tell the difference, right? So we're going to say background red at 400. And then this one can go background blue at 400. And that's kind of the start to what we're gonna be building here. All right, so next up, all we have to do here is give these a reasonable <laughs> gradient background. So we'll say background gradient to bottom right. And we're gonna go from background gray, or sorry, from gray 700 to gray 800. And you can play around with these to make some really, really fun stuff. And then here, we're gonna say background gradient to bottom right from gray 700 i'm checking my notes 700 to gray 900. okay so there is that gray 700 to gray 800 seems not dark enough let's go from 800 to 900. okay so it's not as cool as the black i think but you could even say to black instead of that, and then from gray to black. Now let's do to black on that second square as well. Cool, I like how that looks. And now that we have the background grid of squares, we don't need this red 400 here. We're gonna do the same thing for the line across the middle. We're gonna say div class is absolute, and inset is zero. And just to see what this looks like, let's go background red, 400. So we have that there, and that's working out fine. We are going to say right here, flex items center. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're going to give a child div in here. Let me scroll up. Div class is going to be height is one pixel, height is pixel, width is full, background black. So essentially what that created is this line right here. So we have two absolutely positioned items, and then we have our relatively positioned number right there. So you can take this entire thing right here on the left side, go down to the right side, paste that in, and make sure your right side has relative as the parent. There you go. And then you wanna make sure that this span right here is relative so that it sits above the absolutely positioned item right here. And then we're gonna take this line across the middle and paste that in right here. There we go. So that is good enough to position our line across the middle. We have our background, and that's going to give us this really nice gradient there. And the final, final, final part of it is giving our flip clock container a stand. So I'm going to name our flip clock container relative, and then we're going to do the stand is absolutely positioned. And you could do this a couple different ways. You could relatively position it underneath the stand, but since this is all, I kind of want this one container to be 
the flip clock container so that if you copy this whole thing and move it into a component or something, everything stays together. So the stand, we're going to say absolutely position inset X is zero and MX is auto. So let's do that. And then we're going to do a div class is width is three fourths there. Background is yellow at 100. Height is five and rounded. And let me show you what that makes. I think I might be missing a class. So notice how it's kind of like sitting right there. We have to say negative bottom is five. So now we're going to position it at the bottom and push it a little bit below. But notice how it's not really centered. So let's figure out what's going on there. We're going to flex box this and justify center there. Cool. So that's our flip clock with a stand. Has a nice line in the middle. You can remove that if you want, this blue line, by removing the gap X pixel. It all depends on what you want your style to be. That looks pretty good too. We have our two grid backgrounds right here. You have a line across the middle. So I hope this was helpful. A lot of fun tactics, absolutely positioned items, CSS grid, and some fun gradients to build out a nice flip clock. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.